Hello, in this video we're going to take a quick look at how to set up a rig like this, which is a spline IK rig. You see what I've got here is a cylinder, and what I've done is rig it in such a way that we can move these uh, these custom bone shapes around, and the cylinder will uh, move and deform and stretch. So this could be used for something like uh, pipes, or maybe arms or tentacles, or something like that, um, whatever you want really. So, there's a few steps to go through, let's get started with a new blender scene. First let's create the object that we're going to be deforming, so this is going to be a cylinder. I'm going to press X and delete the default cube, and Shift A and add in our mesh and cylinder. Now I don't think we need 32 vertices, so I'm going to choose uh, just 12 here and we're going to tab into edit mode. I want to just uh, move it up a little bit so it's sort of sitting on the floor, so uh, G to grab and then Z to constrain to the Z axis, hold down control and just snap it up one grid unit like that, you see it rests nicely on the floor. And now we're going to kind of scale it along everything except the Z axis, press Shift Z after pressing S to scale and we'll get it down to a sort of more or less uh, pipe shaped uh, thing here. And we need to add a couple of few loop cuts in to uh, for it to form, deform around. So all we do for that is press Control R, and we're going to scroll up on the mouse wheel a bunch of times. You'll see in the bottom left corner of the screen how many loop cuts that is. So I'm going to go for uh, 16 there. That should be just fine. So that's uh, that's that done. Actually, because I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to this, I'm just going to add a loop cut uh, close to the end there and one near the bottom. Let's go into orthographic mode with number pad 5 to make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to cut in, um, uh, well, um, extrude this top face as well. So I control tabbed into uh, face select mode there. And just so I can select this face nice and easily, E to extrude, right click and then scale it down and this gives us these uh, two face loops here which um, will help the subdivision surface modifier when we come to add that. So back into object mode let's go one into front view and we need to add the armature that's going to be deforming this first of all so uh, shift A add in armature single bone now it's kind of hiding inside the uh, cylinder at the moment a little bit so we just go over to our armature properties here and uh, choose x-ray to uh, see it through there tab into edit mode on the armature and with this tail part selected press G to grab along the z-axis again hold it down control I can snap it right up to the top of our cylinder here and I'm just going to select the middle of the bone press W and subdivide and we need a whole bunch of bones for this, so I'm going to just uh, whack the number of cuts up there to 10, and that should be just fine. Back into object mode then, we need to parent the cylinder to the armature in such a way that uh, the, the deformation starts to happen with the vertex groups. So select the cylinder first, shift select the armature, and we're going to press Control p and choose with automatic weights. Now you can see that uh, if we select our armature and control tab into uh, pose mode how this deformation is starting to happen and what we'll do is to make this a little bit more pretty is select our cylinder once again if I can get it and go to our modifiers panel here and just choose to add the subdivision surface modifier I'm going to set the levels to 2 and turn on smooth shading and you can see how we're getting a pretty um, pretty okay deformation here and that'll be just fine. So to clear out the pose here we'll select all the bones and just press Alt G R S and that clears the location, the rotation and the scale um, back to where we were. For now then we're done with our object, we've got the deformation happening so I'm going to select the object, press M and just move it down to this layer here so it's out of the way because we now we need to deal with how to set up the spline IK so this works uh, with a curve, so we're going to shift A and add a curve, Bezier curve here. And the thing I like to do off the bat with this is just go into edit mode and to press um, RX90 to rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees, and then GX1 to move it one blender unit along the x-axis, and that puts the first control point right at the middle of the scene, and uh, everything's lined up there flat along the y-axis into front view then and I'm going to select the end control point here G to grab and I'm going to place it right at the top of the uh, the, 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 the last bone here um, that works just again holding down control to snap to the grid 
and A to select everything and then press V and change the handle type into vector. This is simply just to line them up really quickly and easily because now I'm going to change the handle type back to automatic. So now what I want to do is if I go back into object mode I'll just move our armature over to layer 2 here so that we can see what's happening with our um, our curve. So with everything selected in edit mode I'm going to press W and subdivide. I'm going to choose two cuts here I think and we'll see what happens when I grab one of these control points now how we can move it around and we get a kind of nice uh, nice deformation of the of the curve there. The process now to add the um, IK, the, the spline IK, if we bring back our um, bones here, what I need to do is put the armature into pose mode once again, so control tab into pose mode. We're going to select our Bezier curve first of all, so we've got that selected, and then I'm going to shift select the end bone here. I'm going to go control shift C, which is just a shortcut to add a constraint, and I'm going to choose spline IK. Now we'll find the constraints been added in the bone constraints uh, button here. You can see the spline IK targeting the Bezier curve. You could set that up manually if you want. And it's looking a bit strange at the moment because we need to set our chain length to 11 in, uh, in our case. Um, and that should be alright because now what you should, should see is when I select the Bezier curve again and go to edit mode, I select one of these uh, control points say, how these bones now bend around and are conforming to the curve. So that is the that's how to set up spline IK, but we're not done yet because we can't really edit um, animate this very easily or at all really. So we need to add some more control bones for the curve. Now I'm going to add a fresh armature for this. So I'm going to just uh, once again we're going to select our layer just with the curve on it because we're going to be dealing with this at the moment. So I'm going to go Shift A and add in a new armature and a single bone. On this then, I'm going to line up uh, four bones or um, with each of the control points of the curve. So into edit mode on the curve, I'm just going to select this control point first of all. I'm going to go to Shift S and choose cursor to selected. Now back into object mode I can select this, go into edit mode and just snap this to the cursor, so selection to cursor. Now I have to do this a number of times, um, so I'm going to select the next control point down, shift S, um, cursor 2 selected. And this time in edit mode on the armature I can just go shift A and it'll add a bone uh, at the uh, 3D cursor there. So we've got a couple more of these to go, shift S, cursor 2 selected, onto this, shift A and once again shift S cursor 2 selected and shift A. So there we go we've got uh, four bones one for each of the control points and now we need to use what are called hooks to hook to each of the control points so when we move the bone in pose mode the uh, the curve will come with it. So in order to do uh, this what we want to do is select our first bone here we're going to shift select the Bezier curve and we can go to edit mode now and be able to choose the first control point. Remember we had the top bone selected in pose mode just a second ago. We go control H and choose hook to selected object bone. Now when we go to pose mode or out of uh, edit mode you'll see that the, the um, it's working but there's a kind of offset here so what we need to do in this case when that happens is go back into edit mode on the curve and we'll go to the modifiers here and just hit the reset button and this makes sure that then the uh, the curve is going to conform properly just like that. So we need to do this a couple more times as you can see so select the Bezier curve and this is going to be the next control point down control H hook select to selected object bone hit the reset back out this one Bezier curve choose control H hook to selected object bone just remembering to hit the reset each time I don't really know whether that's absolutely necessary every time but we're going to do it anyway just in case control H hook to selected object bone so there we go now you should see when we go into pose mode how our curve is uh, moving around and we can control it very nicely with these bones
Now you could have used empties for hooks, and that might be a little bit easier, but with the empties it means that you can't easily just select everything and go Alt G R S or whatever to reset their locations. Um, so this is why we want to use the bones for this. And if we just bring back our object here, you can see how this is now working uh, just as we expect. Now these bones aren't particularly pretty, so I'm just going to make a little custom shape for them here. So over to the last layer, Shift A and add in a mesh. I'm going to have a circle and maybe with um, 16 vertices, nearly typed too many there, um, into object mode vertex select mode so you can see what's going on shift D to duplicate and then I'm just going to press RX90 shift D to duplicate RZ90 and this kind of makes a little custom ball shape here and that means when we enable our layer um, over here once again we can go and choose the first bone here actually let's name our little widget I'll go to here just name, name it WGT no rig shape whatever and we now we can go and choose the custom shape for our bone so I'm going to scroll go into the bone buttons here custom shape I type W and I can choose the rig shape and you'll see that it kind of disappears and that's because we've only got this as a as a wireframe thing so if we go first over to select a bone and go to the armature uh, sorry the object properties here we can change the display to wire and that will bring those back. So we've got this bone selected again. Let's just add the custom shapes for all of these. Rig shape, select this bone. I'm just searching there by pressing the first letter of uh, widget. Custom shape, widget. And there you have it. Now obviously they're a little bit big at the moment. So let's just select our widget shape. Go into edit mode and scale these guys down. Just a wee bit like that. And then we can... Um, uncheck that layer. Maybe we can select our where's our Bezier curve? It's on layer two. All right, select our Bezier curve, move that over to layer two. Just to tidy things up a little bit here. And then we can just enable these two layers and we've got our uh, rig completed. Well, there are a couple of options for the spline IK which I could just go through if we enable our bones here. Um, so if I can get in here and select. If you hold down Alt and right click, it gives you an option to select whatever is um, underneath the, under the cursor there. So in pose mode I can select this. And what you'll find is in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the bone constraints panel here, <coughs> excuse me, um, you might want the Y stretch um, to be off. And that means that the bone, um, the, the chain will always stay exactly the same length. Okay. And if you wanted to have the Y stretch on, there are a couple of options for the XZ scale mode here. So if you cho chose uh, volume preservation, for example, then when you stretch this guy out, he'll get thinner. And um, similarly, if you were to squash them down, then um, it'll uh, preserve the volume like that. So that might be desirable in uh, some cases. So yeah, I hope that helps. Um, Spline IK is pretty fun to play with. Have a go with it. Happy blending and take care. I'll see you next time.